Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the prophet Jonah went to the people of Nineveh and proclaimed the word of the Lord to them, and they repented in sackcloth and ashes. And we the readings today. The priests have come to us, the church has come to us, the apostles have come to us, the saints have come to us and proclaimed to us the word of the Lord. That Christ is risen, he's praying to us that the Lord, of course, has come forth from the tomb. And that there's new life in Christ. And we repented in sackcloth and ashes. Or we've been as those Jews who wanted something quite differently and paid off people to go say that the Lord has been stolen away. Brother Dimitri and I have commented several times in the last two days about the sparseness of the crowds of our church. When every Orthodox Christian should be in the church on these days, without exception. Without exception. Because <clears throat> this is everything. Everything that means anything is this, with Father Dimitri and I both commented that the ways of the world have become very powerful, very, very powerful out of our people. Very powerful. The comforts and the ease. Would we be like the people of Nineveh? If we were given a new lease on life, as the Shunammite Son was healed by Elisha and the widow of Zarephath by Elijah, the son. Would we live that new life for the better? If we were called forth from the tomb as Lazarus last Saturday. Could we do as he did and became an apostle to the ends of the earth as he went far away from his land? In all these readings, we see a new lease of life. The Lord has come and drowned the noetic Pharaoh, Satan, under the seas of his glory and of his grace and his power and given us newness of life to length of days and this this service today is a is a profound mystery and the different churches and the different uh, traditions celebrate it somewhat differently but all with the same meaning with different emphases for example the the greeks were already wearing white this morning when they came in here they wouldn't have worn it now and switched they also took the Epitaphios, the Palashtinitsa, into the last night, because we were proclaiming the resurrection last night. Wrong? No. A different emphasis. That, that, is already, that Hades is already being shattered. The Russians hang on to this tomb as long as we can, because we don't know until that last night. We don't know until tonight that Christ is risen ultimately. It, uh, very women would not have known either. Both of them are beautiful. The point in these distinctions is this, this is a profound mystery with many, many depths and many, many, many levels that we can never find as many times as we serve it. There will always be something new in these prophecies, always something new in the epistle, always something new in the gospel, always something new in the liturgy itself. Because Christ came to bring a new life, a new way of life that we are to be profoundly changed by, as the people of Nineveh were profoundly changed by for the rest of their lives. So we can't leave today and act worldly. We have to go home this afternoon, and yes, we anticipate Pascha, yes, we're excited about Pascha, the things that we haven't had in a while, and things like that. But today should be a spiritual day. It's the Sabbath, the rest of the Lord, in which He lies in the tomb. So on this day, we should go home and spend it not only in rest, but in spiritual things. Forsake the television, forsake the internet, and any of that stuff. And read spiritual books, read the scriptures, read the fathers, read the lives of the saints. Read your prayers of preparation for Holy Communion for this evening. That's very important. Keep the fast at least from early supper, I would say. It must be a fast for this Eucharist as well tonight. Prepare yourselves. Keep it as a spiritual day. And then bright week comes. And do not throw it away because bright week is, is a new week. It is not a week to go back to the old perhaps different foods and things that we haven't had in a while, but it's much more than that. It's not a time to go back to sinful habits. It's not a time to go back to indulgence and constant indulgence and entertainments and things that aren't of the spiritual realm whatsoever. It's a time to become even more spiritual, to be filled with the light of Christ, to be filled with the gospel, and to be truly changed by Pascha. That we don't have to come back on Thomas Sunday and say, oh, I indulge too much. No, we don't want to do that. We want to live Bright week is a new week, filled with the light of Christ and changed to become authentic people that the apostle resurrection has truly changed us 
and made us authentic people, as the saints were, that they were the same with the bishop, they were the same with the greatest sinner, they were the same with everyone they met, with the emperor, or with the lay woman, or with the monk, or with the, the patriarch, anybody, they were the same, authentic Christians. The only thing that mattered was this light of the new resurrection, which we have just proclaimed, but we still hang on to it for a few more hours, and really, Let's hang on to it for the rest of our lives, not just for a few hours, but as St. Seraphim, all of life became Christ is risen, and everybody became my joy. Not that he wasn't a great ascetic in the middle of all that, he certainly was, absolutely. But he continued to have that possible joy no matter where he went, and life didn't go back to the way it was. So the Lenten season should be a time that has renewed us, not a time that is just an anomaly, but a time that has changed old habits into beautiful and new and joyous and life-bearing and Christ-transfiguring habits for our lives. Amen. Amen.